Namaskar my dear students hope you all are doing well i got another request of discussing this topic you will understand this topic if you know the basics of all the components and designing of a caste partial denture so let's start tooth supported versus tissue supported removable partial denture you may get a short note on this topic in your theory exams you may asked number of questions in grand viva and also a very important topic for mds preparation the first point is support you know the whole design of a cast partial denture depends on the support we have two options for support in any prosthesis first is the tissue second is the tooth or the abutment if we talk about a complete denture it is a totally tissue supported prosthesis FPD fixed partial denture is a totally tooth supported prosthesis if we talk about RPD removable partial denture just see the first picture the first picture there is a tooth bounded saddle okay so the source of support in this case will be the teeth or the abutments on which the rests are placed now see the second picture as on one side there is a tooth bounded saddle or the edentulous area on the other side there is a distal extension edentulous space distal extension saddle area there is no distal abutment so in this case the prosthesis will get the support from both the teeth and the tissue so what we conclude in kennedy's class 3 or class 4 edentulous arches the prosthesis will be tooth supported okay so uh, and in case of the kennedy's class 1 and class 2 edentulous arches the prosthesis will get its support both from the teeth and the tissue mcq is also asked regarding the support that the support for a rpd is mainly from it is from both the teeth and the mucosa if they have not mentioned the kennedy's class okay now if it is written class 1 or 2 or distal extension rpd then the answer will be again both residual ridge and the abutment the prosthesis will get its support from residual ridge as well as abutment now the question arises if they have mentioned the amount of support that is equally from abutment and residual ridge or mostly or mainly from the residual ridge now what will be our answer our answer will be the support is mainly or mostly from the residual ridge okay one more important point which has to be noted support from the residual ridge becomes greater as the distance from the abutment increases as the distance from the abutment it increases the support will be more and more from the tissue okay i hope these points are clear to you the first point we discussed is support it actually decides all the components we are planning for a cast partial denture and the support only becomes the deciding factor for choosing the impression technique also you know there are two type of impressions one is the anatomic and second is the functional or the physiology anatomic impression will suffice if our prosthesis is tooth supported here we need to record the teeth primarily so for a tooth supported rpd we will make a normal anatomic form of impression as we do for the uh, dentulous or the partially edentulous cases we make the impression using an elastic impression material like alginate or silicon in a stock or custom tray on the other hand if we have to make a physiologic or functional impression we record the tissues or the mucosa in physiologic or functional state 
we use a free flowing impression material like zinc oxide eugenol impression paste or mouth temperature waxes. We record the remaining teeth in the static or the anatomic manner over it. So we take two impressions for these cases, for the class 1 and class 2 Kennedy's cases. If this is done after the framework fabrication, it is called as altered cast technique or corrected cast technique where we change the master cast after recording the tissues as we see in this picture. This is the after uh, framework we have made the final or the functional impression of the mucosal region. Then we have altered the cast. So this is the altered cast or corrected cast technique. Details of this technique I have discussed in another video. I have also mentioned the link in the description box. You can watch it. So what we conclude for the tooth supported RPD, we will make anatomic form of impression. For the tooth tissue supported RPD, we will make both anatomic and functional form of impressions. Major connector. Major connector is a component of a removable partial denture that joins the components on one side to the other side. What will be the difference in its design? More coverage by the major connector, more support it provides. We all know this fact. And in which case we need more support, especially from the tissue or the mucosa? Yes, class 1 and class 2 distal extension RPDs. So more tissue coverage major connector will be used for these cases. So let's see the images. First is the palatal bar, single palatal bar or the single palatal strap. They will be used for the class 3 cases in the maxillary arch and lingual bar major connector can be used in the mandibular arches. For class 4, we can use double palatal bar or horseshoe or U-shaped major connectors. Now, if we talk about the distal extension RPDs or the tooth tissue supported RPDs, Kennedy's class 1 and 2 cases, more tissue coverage is needed. So, the interior posterior palatal strap, as we see in this image, or the complete palate in the maxillary arch will be preferred. Lingual plate major connector can be given in the mandibular or the lower arch which will provide more support from the lingual mucosa. Direct retention that is the clasp assemblies or the intracoronal retainers. For the tooth supported RPDs that is the class 3 and the class 4 cases no stress release design is required. The stress has to be taken by the abutment. So rigid clasp assemblies will be preferred. Simple circlet clasp as we see in this image. Okay, so the simple circlet clasp can be given in these cases and bar clasp can be given in aesthetic zones for the reason is the less metal show, they are more aesthetic. Intracoronal retainers or the internal attachments are also used in these cases. That is the class 3. MCQ is often asked on this. You know, instead of class 3, they mention class 5 and class 6 just to make the question tricky, which is actually the modification of class 3 only. On contrary, if we talk about the distal extension RPDs or the tooth tissue supported RPDs, stress release design is required. Stress distribution is needed between the abutment and the tissue. So the flexible direct retention will be designed. For that, we can go for RPI clasp assemblies as we see in the picture. Mesial rest proximal plate and the eye bar. Okay. Or we can also go for the reverse circlet clasp as we see in this picture. 
So these are the options for the distal extension cases. One added advantage of giving the mesial rest in the RPI is that it actually converts the class 1 liver action to the class 2 liver action, which is more preferable. This I have mentioned in the video on biomechanics in RPD. The link has been shared in the description box. You can just have a look. Indirect retention. In the tooth supported RPDs, that is the class 3 cases, the fulcrum line that may cause the denture rotation actually does not exist. So the indirect retention is not practically needed in these cases. While in tooth tissue supported RPDs, the fulcrum line, it passes from the distal rests of the abutment teeth as we see in these images. So the indirect retention is needed to resist any denture base lifting away from the tissues. We can see the most preferable position of the indirect retention as the arrows we can see. Okay, so this is the most preferred position for the indirect retention. I have discussed all the fulcrum lines and the details of the RPD movement in the biomechanics lecture. Please go through it for better understanding. I have also shared the link in the description box. Denture base material. We know for the tooth supported RPDs like class 3 and class 4 cases, no future reline is required. So the metal bases are preferred. Metal bases have several advantages over the acrylic denture bases. You know which metals are used? Cobalt chromium or type 4 gold alloy. This is another MCQ question which is asked. While for the tooth tissue supported cases like the class 1 and the class 2 cases, future reline is anticipated due to the bone loss. So the acrylic denture bases will be preferred. We can also see this in the picture. Okay, as we know, in spite of many disadvantages of acrylic, its main advantage is that it can be relined. So that's all for the topic today. I hope now you will be able to differentiate between the two types of cast partial denture designs, the tooth supported and the tooth tissue supported. The difference in the basic support and the difference in the components of the designing. Please like and share the video. You can mention your topics in the comment section or just drop at my email ID. Thank you so much. Wish you success.